Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last series of Europe in which we are exploring, right now, the most conservative side I believe that we can try to get with Big Papa Albert S. Yeah, he is a dude that rules with unlimited power, but we also are back in 1964, in which we're going to try, like I said, to go down the most conservative route. Uh, regarding these focuses, um, I've already read through these once. I will leave, usually leave these focuses on screen if you'd like to read them yourself. Uh, some of the focuses I've not read before, I will go ahead and read them, but a lot of them I won't, so it is what it is. And since we have so much PP to begin with, I'm going to go ahead, and since we're going to go full conservative, or at least as much as possible, because I, I, I really don't know what's going to happen, max it out, because I've done the reformist side, 100% full reformist, but we're going to go conservative. So I don't have to deal with the regime stability too much. Uh, we can hold a speech. That's pretty cheap. I uh, might as well try that one. Vast political promises. Um, probably not. And more influence. Seems okay with us, right? Now we got to deal with all of these different little groups down here. We'll see what happens with a Dutch problem. Uh, we'll do the Dutch first because we like the Dutch, right? Cool. Awesome. 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 And I guess we have a couple more divisions to deal with. Very, very nice. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. But Daddy Speer is uh, victorious. Did I read this one last time? I don't know. Let's at least read this one. From the steps of the Reichstag today, Speer has announced that he has finally secured his place as the Big Daddy of Germany. Armed soldiers from Stauffenberg's 6th Panzer Division and hundreds of armed militia fighters who had taken him to Germania surrounded the Big Daddy's Reich's leader as he was announced he would be bringing Germany to new era prosperity and enlightenment by being extremely conservative. While hundreds of thousands filled the streets in celebration for the new leader and an end to the most bloody conflict Germany has ever become embroiled in, some skirmishes still continue across the nation as the followers of Speer's enemies have refused to give up the fight despite their losses, refusing to accept Speer as their next leader. However, Speer's speech has reached acclaim not only in Germany, as it has become the most televised broadcast in our nation in decades but around the world as well. It is not enough to dream of a strong Germany. We must believe in a stronger Germany. We must strive for a strong Germany. We will shine a light in the dark and be a beacon of our children and their children as they will remember us as the ones who made a strong, brave, beautiful new world for them to inherit. There's a lot of strong words in uh, that last paragraph, but a new era has become. Ah, Papa Speer. Also, with a thumbnail, um, uh, first of all, actually, if you want to read about Halls in Germany, please go ahead. Uh, and this, as well as this one, too. Um, yeah, the thumbnail. Okay, so I have the big Berlin building there, or Germania building. Vauxhall, I think it is. I could be wrong about that. Oh, Philippi, I in Chile, cool. Um, actually, if, like, on my Patreon, like, hopefully by the time this video goes up, you'll see, if you're on my Patreon, um, with, I think, the middle tier, like, the actual thumbnail I really, really wanted to do. <laughs> that would Im immediately probably get me to monetize, but... Oh, God. You gotta love playing certain nations and coming up with certain thumbnails. So, yeah, I'm sorry. It's just... It's it's fun. It's a lot of fun coming up with some thumbnails that you can't use on YouTube. But, hey, whatever. Uh, Germanic Brotherhood. Let's see. Hmm... If you want to read about this one, please go ahead. I'm pretty sure I read this one as well. The conservative cause and the right benefits from this. Very cool. And then if you want to read about this on the streets of Germany, please go ahead. Just because I've read through all these before. I mean, these are just literally the focuses and events that happen kind of no matter what. And actually, by going, oh, wooing the Dutch, except their demands pay full subsidies. You know what? We still want to have as much of the Zolverein or whatever we're going to make as much as possible. So our national dot will rise, accept demands, totally fine, totally, totally, totally fine. I hope they'll stay with us. Yeah, 44%. Yeah, trying to go reformist with this regime stability. I just, I was about ready to punch a wall when doing that. So, and remember, a good Aryan man makes for a good Aryan Reich. It starts with you. Did I read this one before? Um, I think I did, but maybe not. Um, if you want to do it, please go ahead. So, a lot of these events, I've read through these before, but whatever. The Nuremberg Reda. Cool. Are they with us or are they against us? Oh, we don't even know yet. No, they love by Rochemont. An agreement reached. Politics is not an exact science. I remember reading that one. And I want to do one of these after we get all this other stuff done. That's, this is so much easier to do. Brothers in arms. Heims in Reich. The Nuremberg speech. Cool. Germany is not yet lost. Very nice. Followed up with promises for the future. Yes, please. And then the status of Denmark. And to all those, actually, which one is, actually, we probably do the middle one first, because we get more growth. So here's aid for the present, and broken mirrors. I'm doing it for everyone, I'm doing it for everyone, I'm going crazy. Approaching the Danes, they will return home. Very good. 
Uh, oh, I remember this one. I remember this one. Broken mirrors, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Poverty will get rapidly improved the carrot and the stick. Now on to the next step. Yes. Follow it up with open the bolts. I love that these are really short focuses, seven day focuses. Because reading through all this stuff, took, it takes so much time. And this part of the focus tree and the next part of the focus tree took me probably like two, three episodes to get through. So they're nothing without us. So I see how they hold speeches about trivial things now. Very cool. And Divine Mega Severe declared war on the Pacific Fleet. Uh, very nice. Very, very nice. Welcome home with this taken care of. Shpeat turns to other issues. Beautiful, my friends. Actually, cool. A for the present. Very nice. Oh. Okay, well, that's nice. No wonder I sent you guys out before. Uh, we'll go and evolve. Hell, Wolf. More dream stability. Why not? Nothing else down here. And Heims in the Reich. Bermin Maden. Token political focuses. The humanitarian crisis. The Fatherland still suffers. Thank you, mine Fuhrer. Cool. Nice. I do feel, apologize, though, for like doing it like this. It feels weird not reading through these focuses, even though I've read through pretty much all of them already once. But it feels weird, because there's so many focuses approaching the Bohemians. Let us see how they will react. Cool. Because uh, the Civil War is not too bad. The German Civil War overall. I know a lot of people don't like it, but for me... It's not too bad. Playing as Hadrish is difficult, but not impossible. Spare is not that bad if you know how to set it up. Borman was super easy to play as him. I need to try Goring out someday, but... Today is not that day, and the Bohemian demands. Nothing but a small barrier. The Reich does not bend to the conquered. Um, I kind of want to do that one, but I do want, I do want to do this one more. Nothing but a small barrier. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. It's called for a special proposal to be made. Recognized as honorary Aryans. Hmm. The Reich does not bend to the conquered. Will they go to war with us if we don't do that? I don't know. I'll try something else maybe a little bit different this time. Let's see. Let's get you guys over here first. And then we'll do... Show the crimes? Yes. Give us a few days for that. Well, wow, we're at 57% uh, regime stability. That's pretty nice. It's regressing 7.4%. Not bad. Look. Oh, crap. I remember this now. Ah, the great Hungarian game. Alright, so we're at 5 and they're at 4. I guess the only way we could do is that one. We need liquid reserves at army XP, eh? Alright, 5 days left. Not bad. If you'd like to read about denial complicity, please go right ahead. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Most stability, please. Thank you. We do not bend to the conquered. Show their crimes. Now, I think last time I did Ballman's shadow because it was reformist. Uh, Goring is the corrupt warmonger. Hadrish, the blood-soaked butcher. Yes. Who should we bear in history? Hadrish. Oh, poor Hadrish. Now you either bend the knee. Oh. Well, let's see. Um, I think this is... I haven't read this one before, so I must bring you unfortunate news. The idea that the Czechs must be turned into honorary Aryans has not been received well in Germania. They may have spl spilt blood to protect their territory, yes, but they are subservient to the Reich first. They must learn its culture and its ways. They must learn the language and they must learn that to become a German. You must know what it is to be a German. Anything else would be a disapproving notion of the Germanization process. I'm sure you understand that, Herr Lutz. When I tell you that my asking of the protector to become a part of the Reich is no longer a request, it is a demand. This is unfortunately how things must go. I will give you a period of 72 hours to respond. If you do not respond in this time, the consequences will be drastic. Heimens Reich, Herr Lutz, für Speer. Pray that they accept. But if they do not, we have ways of dealing with them. To all who fought, yes. Our regime stability go up? Oh, I can't wait to have a lot of regime stability. Going extremely conservative probably will have no dire consequences for us in the future, right? Probably not, right? Oh, it's not bad. Hopefully they go to 11. Please go to 11 here. Favorable trade deals? Because we can't do this one because we don't have enough army XP. Actually, hope these guys... Oh, the Bohemians refuse! Speer paid a little thought. They would accept... Obviously they would. What other choice could they possibly have? But as the minutes turned into hours, turned into days, his anxiety grew and grew. There was a mild annoyance for him after the first 24 hours, which turned into a bothering feeling that plagued him for another 24 hours. And once the final days had begun, that manifested into Speer pacing in his office, waiting, just waiting for someone to come through and hand him a note. They would say that, Mein Führer, you have received a letter from Reich's protector at Lutz, and then bid him a crisp salute before hurrying off. 
But that moment of reprieve never came. Instead, the bell had struck midnight, and Speer almost drew blood from biting in his fingertips as the last seconds of peace slipped past him. Now he had an issue to deal with. Not a big one militarily, but it would show itself to the rest of the world as a glaring hole in middle Europa. If you couldn't peacefully annex one of the most integrated subjects of the Reich, then what would that say for all the others? That question crossed his mind many times as he began to drop plans of action. Could something go right in the Reich? Maybe I should have done the other one with the, um, the Dutch. I should have done the other route, perhaps, probably, actually. But whatever. Oh, to all those who fought and to all those who worked. Nice. Cool. Get us more army XP. That's all I'm here for. We got one army XP. Come on. Raise it up. The change to come. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, well, he must be watched closely. Well, at least we got two. 2.4 army XP. That's not too bad. Unfulfilled report. Whoa, what has the AI been doing? Holy crud. Um, we'll trade with you guys. That's fine for us for now. You guys. Um, go to two. And we'll go with one. Are we still building up? Yes, we are, which is very nice. Very good. Sehr gut. Oh, they're 10. Come on, man. Seriously, Harold Wilson wins it. The elections to all those who worked and now suspend the persecution though extremely controversial to this day the nuremberg laws are a cornerstone of national socialism at this point really them back so soon after assuming power could have disastrous consequences for the fierce plans at the same time the majority of young spirits are fervently opposed to the continued existence the cabinet has also made clear the unrepentant loathing for german racialism setting the moral and societal damages allegedly inflicted upon the reich Perhaps there is a compromise. Abolishing the Nuremberg Laws might be out of the question, but issuing a fear directive to temporarily suspend them would be unlikely to raise any eyebrows, except amongst the most hardcore conservatives. We might thereby alleviate the worries of the party's bureaucracy. Reformist elements within the Reich are unlikely to be convinced by such a token move away from traditional Nazism, however. Ending Aryan lineage studies sounds like a lot of fun to do, but suspend the persecution? I don't know about that. I need to play as Goring sometime. 72% is not high enough. If we don't do anything, it will be soon. Oh, you can Slovakia. Slovakia. Don't question it. We're going straight into Slovakia. I want those Slovak booties today. 1-800-Slovak-Booties. Okay, wait to the Balkans. Ah, oh, very good. Seems an obvious choice to us. <sighs> That's disappointing, but whatever. Hmm. I guess we probably honestly all train. Well, we'll do this one first, and then we'll train them, maybe. Cool. 8 and 10. Suspend the persecution, renew the laws. There you are, my friends. You would like to do that? If we fail to abolish or amend our current policies, who knows where they will, might lead, where they might lead us. Bratislava agrees. Oh, look at that. Success. Our diplomats have returned to Germany with the good news. Oh, my apologies. I, I don't know why I clicked on that. But it was very fast. My apologies. There you go. Uh, C Battalion. Yes, please. Yes, please. How do we do the polls, then? Uh, very nice. Uh, we can keep spending stuff, but 72% is already pretty good. And I'm going to take the, the focuses this time uh, that do not require regime stability to be a certain percentage. So, I really want to try something different. Oh, uh, the Polish Thorn. Ah, we can do, deal with them now immediately. Ar okay, welcome back, Ireland. Cool. If you like to about that, please go ahead. An alternative. And I, last time, or at least when I went reformist, um, I went with the Reich Minister's plan, even though I... I was bashing my head because of that, but uh, how about we get through this one first? Sonda Goresht. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Get even more regime stability. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, sure, why not? Anything else here? Uh, how's the great game going? We're at 8 and 10. We've got 15 days left. That's fine. I'm actually going to go ahead and read the martial strategy. Because even though we could do this one, I did that last time. No thanks. I assume that the martial strategy has been re received with characteristic positivity by Führer Speer. Gina Feldmarschall Hans Speidel, a prominent adherent to reformism within the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, has proposed the Gross Germanisches Reich adopt an aggressive approach when dealing with a rogue Polish nation. Speidel, ever the pragmatist, has proposed that we strong arm the Polish government into accepting an occupation by the Wehrmacht, perpetually neutering the ability of the Poles to revolt in the future. Speer will pay for this? Oh boy. Madness and purges. Oh yeah, Oberlanda. Hopefully someday when the Speer gets reworked or redone, Oberlanda will have some sort of content that we can have fun with and play a lot with. Seems like... A guy that we could have a really good time with, so. Ah, uh, yes, under good rest. Sehr gut, sehr gut. Mod divisions, there you go. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Cut, cut and spend. Actually, are we making divisions? I don't think so. I don't, I don't want to look at this stuff. Don't even bother me with this. Uh, too many, too many. Uh, go medium, go high. Cool. Because I think the AI took over just for a little bit. Anything else here? Yes, no. Sonder gerischt. What a speech. So, oh, there it is. Ah, uh, Newfield has teeth. Very cool. 
Those traders got what they deserved. 90% regime stability. This really honestly seems weird. Propaganda campaign. Predator circuses. Yes, please. Uh, cool. There we go. A few million dollars and a few political power. Thank you very much to block the market headache. Oh, that's not good. That's fine. Whatever. That is fine. No problems. Trod reactionaries with treason. We lose regime stability by 10%. We get more weekly stability, though. National daddyism support goes down, but regime stability increases by 20%. Um. Hmm. Eh, we'll do it anyways. Why not? I just want to deal with the polls, man. Hey, we're strongly conservative now. Look at that. Oh, we can do the thing about Hungary, too. I will try to get all of the Balkan states with us, though. Um, political power, manpower, let's do... This one's bigger first. Lose 50,000? Well, it'd be nice to have liquid reserves, but the OKW's proposal. Henning von Trusco is typically a very well-dressed man, and today was no exception. His uniform, exquisitely ironed and clean, made even Spado's look uniform look messy and rumpled, and Spado's uniform was holding up better than most together. They passed the report to the Big Daddy. If Trusco's uniform looked tidy, then Spado's looked all right, and then Speer's suit looked like a mess of wrinkles and ink marks. If you like to about the Schmidt proposal, please go ahead. Herr Spido, Herr Trusco, may I have an explanation of your plan? Speer spoke softly, his eyes crossing the lettering. Trusco cleared his soap before beginning. Germany holds numerous clear advantages over the new Polish state, but the most obvious one is our military advantage, Herr Speer. The Herr Dwarfs, anything the Poles can grow up, I propose that we put this fact to our advantage. Spido nodded in agreement. Speer put the paper back down. Invasion, he asked bluntly. Trusco's brow furrowed before he continued. No, 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 at least not preferably. The threat of invasion should be more than sufficient to force the Poles to bend the knee. Besides that, Multiple actions that benefit Poland will hopefully aid in creating a perception that we're no longer imperial ma maniacs, but rather a benevolent custodian. Speer smiled. I liked it. You have my full permission to go ahead. And mein Führer, if they refuse, well, the threat of invasion is not an empty one. Spado added, a faint smile crossing his lips. Speer nodded and watched as it exited. Well, let us see how that goes. So we do that other focus first, and now we're going to do a talk of a Krakow. With the Führer's approval of Spado's plan, the time has come for the GGR to seek contact with the newly established Polish government. Indeed, rather than go through the Reichsminister Schmidt's foreign ministry, the Führer has decreed that the Oberkommando de Wehrmacht, under the supervision of the General Field Marshals Spado and Trusko, shall oversee talks with the Polish government. Given the international reputation of the OKW, it is provable or probable that we shall receive a quick response from our contemporaries in Krakow. If you're about this, please go ahead. Time for the diplomatic makeover. And keeping the demands, health and education, excellent, excellent, excellent. What else do we have? Three and three, that sucks, man. We've got, like, nothing there. Mm. I think we'll be okay without that for now. Uh, health and education, what? Go away. We do need pliable youths. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, let's see... Go away. The more pliable remains. We'll do that one. <laughs> Healthcare, education, no, we don't need that here. Overwhelming strikes. Here comes Bennett. Unjuman ideas, huh? Don't let Galen dictate policy to you. Galen be trusted on this matter. Kissing is right, of course. Well, let's go with Galen. Can be trusted on the matter. We'll see what happens. If this campaign falls apart, then so be it. Wrangling guns. Given how it is quite evident that the Poles shall eventually capitulate to our will, it is best we begin to prepare for our occupation of a formal general government. Hmm, who is most appropriate for this greatest task? Greatest of tasks, of course. We cannot pick someone from whom the Poles hold considerable disdain, so it's best we pick a moderate candidate that would ease the worries of the local population. Yes, indeed. Werner Schrader, known for his historic defense of the Polish citizenry's rights, is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Health and education. Uh, oh, the Polish decline. Um, there is one. Well, let's see. Speer looked weary as he shuffled through one report after another. Feedback from the Reichstag had not been positive. There was near universal dissatisfaction with the removal of education from the funding package. He never expected to see the day where the reformers and the Balmanites would agree on anything, but here it was. Letter from Herr Gehler, mein Führer, said Friedman, his secretary, placing a pair of seal sealed envelopes on the desk, and another from the Partei Kanzler. That's all, mein Führer. Speer regarded Friedman with a suspicious eye as he headed out the door. The boy had been so empty-eyed and listless recently. With his pay increase, perhaps it was time to find some more personable to greet visitors for now, however. He had a pile of letters to get through. None were positive, said Galen's. Naturally, the R&D head was overjoyed to know that the youth wouldn't have a chance to get any funny ideas, nor to be educated above 
their stations without a substantial amount of wealth, family wealth behind them. Shapiro couldn't even bear to read Kisinga's criticism from his inner circle only fostered greater stream or stress. Still, this wasn't a complete setback for reformism, so how could anyone truly fault him for this decision? Surely education would have another chance for reform further down the line once national security had been was less of a concern. I'm sure this will all blow over. Hey look, better monthly poverty change. Great. The Polish decline. Stunning news from Walsall today. The Polish government has lost its mind. At least that's the assumption of the Fero's office, as instead of the diplomatic victory we expected, we've been delivered a bewildering refusal of our terms to call this un Expected would be a massive understatement, as it would be a massive understatement to call us foolish. Poland stands no chance against the Reich's war machine, indeed. It, it seems that this decision is made only in a desperate grasp to retain a sense of national pride, whatever the motive. It seems that violence is inevitable. Spiel could feel his headache pulsate with every word of the refusal he read. Enraged, he tossed the letter into his trash can. Were they serious? Did they really think they would stand any chance against the hair? Was this all merely an attempt to make Spiel's life as hard as possible? In any case, it was clear. Jim and Boots would march over the Polish plains once again as invaders. The fear of size, he sat down. This would be a mess in the Reichstag. He could only hope that Spado was not as bad as a commander as he was a negotiator. Ah, <sighs> c'est la vie. Seven, not bad, not bad. Please stay there, it Italy. Please stay there. Don't do anything else, please. Alright, man, two letters uh, adorned Speer's desk today, and one made him significantly happier than the other. This was the first <clears throat> from the OKW itself. The issue of whom this is for the occupation of Poland was a prickly one, and the two letters sitting on the Speer's desk painted both sides nicely. On one hand was a letter from the Trusco recommending an old army friend. Werner Schrader. The main part of Trusco's pitch was Schrader's history and the Wehrmacht, a history of resistance to the greatest atrocity that they had pulled off. Trusco's uh, argument rested upon this resistance after all. Would a standard Wehrmacht man be able to hold on to control in Poland without compromising the new face of the Reich? The second letter was much more infuriating. Coming directly from Ferdinand Schorner, the root of all evil, Speer thought this letter seemed directly out of the 40s. A screen against the Reich's new course, the Reich's decision on Poland, and the Polish nation in general. Schorner's letter called for an immediate reversal back into the genocidal policies of the Reich's earlier days. Incredible, Speer thought. To Schorner, everything was the nail, and he was always a hammer. It's as if he didn't realize that the war was over. The choice was obvious. Speer sent the letter back to Trusco, granting his approval of Schrader's portfolio. As a near afterthought, he swept Schorner's letter into the trash. The world just keeps on moving. Not bad. And 81% regime stability seems very, very nice. 100% there. Cool. Can we invade? I want to invade, please. Oh, and actually, uh, we're doing this one right now just because I wanted to get it done first. But I do want to read an alternative. The hand we offered to the Poles has been refused. Now war is the only option. Could something have been done different? Maybe, but it doesn't matter now. All that's left to do is to prepare for the inevitable. Because we could have done certain materials, but nope. And a home to live in. Nope. They chose no. So, an alternative. And you guys are looking really bad with all this exercising, but that's alright. They need it. Oh, okay, they're tied. Please get to 11. For the love of God, please get to 11. But what must be done? With no diplomatic situation or solution left, war with Poland is inevitable. The divisions and planes ha have to be brought into place now. Already the general staff is drawing up plans on how to quickly and decisively accomplish this. The delusional home army will be brought to heal. For 90 days, we, get, we lose political power, stability, we get more tech, and max planning. Beyond the Atlantic, if you'd like to read about that, please go ahead. There's hope for us yet. A means to the end. Just like roughly 25 years ago, the Wehrmacht is crossing the border into Poland. The die has been cast, so let's get this over with quickly. A peaceful solution might be out of reach, but maybe we can at least mitigate the collateral damage. Das Vaterland. Cool. Um, I don't think I read this one before. Yes, Daddy. It's beginning to bring the boys, Hilda Schwarz yelled from the living room, and immediately the rest of the family was there. Gunther on the sofa by his wife's side, Hans and little Frank playing on the floor in front of the TV. A few seconds later, a tune started playing, publicized by newspapers and posters. Das Vaterland was a large historical series focused on teaching German history to the larger populace, mixing education and entertainment. Good evening and welcome to the Vaterland, or Das Vaterland. The host beamed to the camera. To my right we have Karl Manitius, director of the Monumenta Germania, historic of the greatest study group on the German Middle Age, and to my left Friedrich Zeitfeld, war veteran and expert in studies of the Second World War. The two men nodded politely this evening. We'll examine our relationship with the country widely considered as the greatest enemy of Germany throughout its history. Frankenreich! The show lasted until midnight, but the family felt just like minutes had passed. The reconstruction of the Battle of the Bouvines, when France had unjustly refused the Holy Roman Emperor as its legitimate lord and fascinated the children. Gunther had appreciated Manitius's discussion, discussion yeah, over how the French even allied with the infidels who opposed the Germans during the Thirty Year War. Finally, 
Hilda was moved to tears by the account of how Louise, Queen of Prussia, was so brave as to personally face Napoleon when all hope had been lost. Gunther collected Frank, who had fallen asleep and made to the Belgium, but Hans tugged his trousers. Papa, came the child's sleepy voice. Will this happen again? The wars, I mean. Will France try to take our place again? Gunther thought about it for a second, and then chuckled and patted his son's head. No, little one, it won't. I fear it will protect us, as he did during the Civil War. And then the family went to sleep together. Yes, Papa. What must be done? Neighbors at home are in the land of the rising sun, but the Erhard plan. Actually, no, this one is this one. It says we need to get this done as fast as possible. So, actually, you know what? I did this one fast as possible last time. Let's go to the Erhard plan, and we're going to beeline through this part next. Oh, no. Oh, we're actually we're still training last time. Okay. Five, four, three, two. Let's go. All I want. Oh, yeah. If you guys want to come. Uh, I, yeah, I guess you, you all want to come in. Oh. Okay, so we actually won that last one. Look at that, so it's one to nine. My goodness, one to nine. Are you insane? Are you nuts? Yes, just a little bit. You have to be a little bit nuts to actually play TNO. And that's why we enjoy it. Ah, uh, Poland. I love the Poles. Nothing like a good Pole. Ah, uh, look at that army. I'm literally only doing this for army XP. And to see what the other side is. Actually, Romania's not with us, which kind of sucks. But I'm going to call all of our allies in. Can we, oh, we're waiting a response. Come on, guys. Come join us. Ah, Warsaw will burn! Ah. And now the under the correct government. Venashrada. Home defense. Well, I don't know if that worked out really well for them. So. I love it. And these guys over here, well, they're going to need a, a lesson in uh, what they're going to have to learn here, man. I'd love to take out uh, Switzerland right now. Cool. The Poles have learned their place. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and do uh, the fortress up north. What is this? Poven? Oh, the model colony. I like the model colony. Oh, we have to wait. Okay, the reformist cause benefits us strongly. We're 93%. That's that's pretty darn good. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty darn good. But if you like to read about the air hop plan, please go right ahead. Oh. Quite the character. Cool. We're going to immediately continue progressing here, though. Um, Why not? Why not? And then the Pokemon says, why not? 95% is not too bad. 5 is not terrible. 2 to 4. Let's go to this one first. And then, if you'd like to read about this one, please go ahead. And basically, we'll go to war whenever we're ready. The fall of war. So, mother chick Amelia lay beneath the rubble, dreaming of oblivion. He drifted across the reality where it all ended, where his brethren would never fear to speak Polish, where Warzaza would reside beneath a peaceful horizon of a starless and shrouded holes of the past long forgotten. A world wrought from his own sacrifice for him to join a doomed uprising that would ensure Nazism to be lost in those echoes, and for his children to be disintegrated into the ashes of destiny and time. He awakened from the call of his son, scarcely a decade old, holding his morbidly wounded arm. The child begged for him to find the strength to lift himself up from the debris to join his wife who survived the mortar strike. The father struggled to turn his head to see the devastation. He saw his comrades from the underground all around him, their bodies grained still. From his numbness, he knew he would soon join them to the end. He extended his arm and pulled his son close, and told him with his dying breath to walk towards the sunrise until they reached the mythical new homeland, a place where they would never be lost again. The child's grip did not falter, the pain of loss too providential in his hands. The boy prayed for God to deliver them from evil, for a world where they never had to suffer. As his son begged for the Lord's mercy, he remembered the vision he saw and said that nothing could ever make him give up his only son. Weakly, he murmured to his last words, If I were God, Jacob, I would make the world just so and no different, so I have you and I view. His voice drifted away from the road with his soul. The child held his cold, motionless hand until the smoke cleared and the tolling, tol tolling of St. Florian's bells rang across the ruin. Jakob Omnia reached his, into his father's uniform, unpinned the emblem of the uh, Kotvitka from his leather jacket, and placed it in his pocket before he turned around away from the sunset and began to make his way along the long road home, never lost. So be it. So be it. Are we pretty much ready to go? Yes, we are. How does this keep happening? I don't know how this keeps happening, but it's going to happen regardless. And you want to read about that? Please go ahead. Bing. Da bomb. Nice. Give me that. Give us that army XP. Did we win already? I don't think it's us. Okay, it was us. Very nice. Ah, Zebel. Um, I don't trust Hungarians. No one should trust Hungarians. You never know what those Hungarian guys are up to. Cool. I'm not sure why I did that. There you go. And if you guys need to train, just keep training because you guys are not great. <laughs> um, now last time I chose this one. And I chose price deregulation as well, I believe. So let's go with the Wehrmacht Engineering Schools. 
After the experience with the SS, the Wehrmacht remains extremely leery of anything even resembling a military force, even if that semblance is only an organization. Speer has thus considered a compromise between Erhard Rabor and Rad, and the Wehrmacht ideals for reducing unemployment the Wehrmacht engineering schools. These would be ad hoc polytechnic institutes, set up to provide youths and the chronically unemployed with the training necessary to take up blue collar works while giving them a good dose of military discipline and patriotic indoctrination in the process. Erhard is not overenthused with this notion, but the fear is concerned that placing such a massive responsibility on his shoulders might lead to serious complications should his plans fail. This would be a concession to the Wehrmacht, yes, but allowing it would also be a valuable display of trust in a military. That said, perhaps it is too soon to trust our former enemies. 9 and 9. So if they go over, as long as they don't get 1, we will be quite handsome. Well, we're all going to be handsome regardless, but you know. You know. Delvenga. I gotta play as Delvenga. I... I hope there's a sub mod that... Oh, there we, go. we won this one. That uh, allows him to be uh, a Russian unifier. That'd be really cool. So if you want to about this, please go ahead. And boom. Because we want to get this stuff done too. Cool. But I'm going to go ahead and read about inflation control. Erhard's planned reset of the Reichsmark might look good on paper, but the fear feels that he has failed in his task to, in, in, into account of public opinion. How will the Germans feel when their accumulated reserves of cash becomes worth a fraction of what they currently are? How will we look if such a radical plan fails? Not to mention the tremendous rumblings that would occur amongst National Socialism's faithful masses with such a great deviation from Hitler's tried and true economic policies. Erhard will not be pleased, but the fear knows best. It would be more sensible from a popular and patriotic standpoint to instead institute a contradictionary monetary policy to throw inflation and begin slowly reeling it back. This will give our people time to adjust, not just to their fortunes becoming worthless, but also to the responsibility of living a more fruitful and luxurious lifestyle. We are not the U.S. after all. What use is economic reform if it leads to a populace with no vested interest in national socialist economics? Poverty begins to get worse just for a little bit, just for a little bit, that's all. But if you like to about re reforming business, please go right ahead. But poverty will rapidly improve. So we are very conservative reformers. Oh, we, we get rid of child labor? Man, child labor, kind of cool, though. Anyways, charge people treason? Yes. Hold a speech? Why not? Token reforms? Why not? Dissolve the Rhine. Yes, yes, education. For now. Yes, yes. We need more money. Oh, no. Don't you hate when you run out of money? Hey, we want this one. Nice. The Battle of Barcelona. But I guess the Fortress of the North. Nice. <clears throat> Uh, I like to do this one, but I did this one last time, no exceptions, which is a pain in the butt to get. A gentle approach. Erhard is an intelligent man with good intentions, but he can be a little overzealous at times. He insists on going full steam ahead at all times, trampling long-standing laws and regulations in the name of progress. The fear is aware of the wisdom in Erhard's reforms, but remains deeply concerned about the public relations impact that they will have. Monetary reforms are especially problematic, as the public in general has no knowledge of economics and doesn't understand why we need to render their savings worthless. The fear wishes to restrain Erhard somewhat. He would never stop him from pursuing well-thought-out measured reforms, but there's so, much, so many radical changes happening in such a short period of time. Combined with the recent civil war and the change in leadership, might this all prove too much for the people of Germany? Best to err on the side of caution and heed the more conservative spirits. Remember, reform, not revolution. Oh, the great game. Oh, okay. Cool. Ah, it's for Norway. Go ahead, spend and slash. 5.6% growth is not bad. Hmm. Keep spending, keep spending. The bolstered opposition. Why would anyone listen to the piece of paper on the wall? If you want to read that, please go ahead. Very nice. Don't have any money yet. Turn four. Oh, we are nine. Well, let's see what happens, because the only one we can choose is this one, and that's... The, well, I guess this one, too. It's not great. I want to wait to see what happens up here, because we won the last one, so let's wait. It's best to wait sometimes. A gentle approach. The new Rikes Mox. There you go. Our GDP growth will increase. More stability? Yes, please. Followed up with what? If you like to about... Which one? The moderate. The Reichstag began to applaud. Um, yeah, if you want to put that, please go ahead. Very cool. A redefined relationship. There you go. It's only seven days, so that's not too bad to do. All eyes on us. Survival at all costs. I like that one quite a bit. A redefined relationship. And Neighbors at Home is up next. Yeah, we're, we're just blazing through. With, like, I like reading these things. I really do. But, like, for us, um, I don't know. It's just, I've already read them once. I don't want to read them again right now, so... 
Oh, did I read this one? I don't know. Let's see. The streets of Munich were still dark, and the town is flickering at the horizon foretelling the dawn, but eh, hard. Gottlieb was already going to start the oven. A baker needs a fresh bread for everyone from the get-go, doesn't he? As he made his way through well-known roads, he gave a quick hello to the Opel Patrol passing the crossroads at 5.45 shop, but something attracted his attention as soon as the Wacht had passed. Just past the road, an entire wall had been covered in posters, all identical. He reached the nearest one and stopped to look at it. The imagery was simple but effective. A tall column stood at the center with a large golden eagle perched at the top, majestic and proud, at the bottom of the column. Dozens of little men were busy with pickaxes trying to bring the towering structure down. Some of them wore rich clothes, others didn't, but all of them had their pockets filled with green dollars and all looked at the eagle with a mixture of hate and fear. At the lower end of the poster, in large gothic letters, was written Schutzen C. Deutschland. Ebaha looked at the poster for a few minutes, reflecting. Were really the Americans responsible for all that had happened? For the economic collapse, the Russian war, the civil war? It was impossible, but still, they were Germany's enemies until a few years ago. So they had surely had everything to gain from a weak Reich. As he made his way to the bakery, Ebaha couldn't help but one last thought. Bastard Americana. Um, if you'd like to read about the land of the rising sun too, please go ahead. And very nice. Very good. Very, very good. And here we have it, my friends. Neighbor at home, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. And they will learn in time, which right now. We need to go to the next focus of enemy by enemy versus, which I did last time. If you want to read about that again, please go right ahead. But, friends of y'all, where we would like to be today... Or where would we be today without Japan? As much as we might dislike them now, or combine my cowed the Americans and shatter the illusion of their invincibility. Furthermore, the American economy is a deep is in a deep depression. While Japan is going from strength to strength, it would be much more beneficial to hitch our wagon to the strongest superpower and pursue renewed cooperation. Schmidt was pot strongly discourages us or the Big Daddy from working closely with Japan. Unlike the US, they are far more openly belligerent, owing to their aggressively pan-Asianist and anti-colonial stance. The reality of this cannot be denied, but they offer a truly enormous amount of military power and economic potential for us. If the Berlin-Tokyo Axis were to be reborn, the Americans would find it significantly harder to undermine us. Schmidt insists that this will only escalate tensions and push us further away from the Americans who we have, uh, who have far less interest in war. The friends of yore, and which, if you'd like to read about, uh, we are not alone. Please go ahead. We've got problems. C'est la vie. We always have problems. Welcome to the world. Cool. Oh, look at all these. Wow, well, three in one day. That is a little unusual. Not gonna lie, it's a little unusual. But in the land of the rising sun. The Japanese never disguise their distrust and even outright loathing for us in the past two decades. Our alliance in the Tripartite Pact was born of loyalty of mold and convenience and deterrence against the U.S., which became moot once the Japanese declared war on them and Mr. Daddy Hitler dragged us into it. As a rival fascist power, the Japanese naturally see us as a threat and challenge to the rule, never mind the fact that our spheres of influence barely overlap at all. Our recent friendly overtures toward their arch enemy may actually have made this entity even worse, though. Still, Schmidt has a job to do, and performed it admirably given the circumstances. Welcome to the Diet by the Prime Minister, though snubbed by the Emperor. He made an impassioned speech calling for an end to senseless rivalry and for the Japanese to recognize their goodwill and peaceful intentions towards Europe, or towards the Empire of Japan. He was met with polite and somewhat muted applause, to be expected, of course, but at least he wasn't given the silent treatment. The Big Daddy he still remains skeptical that relations with the Japanese will ever be normalized, but this was a necessary step in to take in our journey towards a positive image on the world stage. If we cannot be seen as willing to reconcile with even our most vicious rival, we will never be trusted as a global actor. It could have gone worse, but that's alright. That is quite alright, because up next, we are not alone. Yep, because that is how long? That is a, oh, 14 day focus. That's not too bad. Not too bad now. I love how fast we're moving through this. I love it. A very, very conservative. Spirit. And warnings of within. There you go, if you want to do that, please go ahead. Get more stability. Regime stability is very nice as well. Thank you. Alright, and now it's turn four. Oh, we busted! So it'll be 2v2. Friends of y'all. Ah, Japan, Spear finally said, glancing at Schmidt to gauge his reaction. As expected, it was one of disappointment and no small amount of horror. Spear had no one to expect, but the expression on the foreign minister's face still hurt a little. Schmidt ground his teeth for a moment before leaning forward and locking his fingers together to keep from bawling his fists, mein Führer. The Japanese don't have anything to offer us. Americans have so much more than that would benefit our economy. Speer took a long time to reply. He stood from his desk and wandered over to the window, gazing out across the concrete skyline he had shaped decades ago. I know, Schmidt, he finally said. Not turning back to look at his subordinate, but I'm not thinking merely of the economy to the U.S. They won't stop their covert activities against us just because of a few trade deals. We need a substantial counterbalance to the military. 
Schmidt sputtered. The sound of his chair scraping against the polished floor as he stood upright so stung the fear of his ears. We have a nuclear arsenal that can flatten every city in North America and then some. Adding Japan's stockpile to that won't help us ease global tensions, Schmidt. The fear's face darkened at the mention of his name in anger. I've made my decision, Schmidt, and you had your tour. We can still have normal relations with the Americans, but just not the kind that you clearly have in mind. He turned to face Schmidt, who had folded his hands behind his back to hide their shaking. That will be all, Herr Schmidt. You are dismissed. The four minister didn't even bother to salute as he turned and stalked from Speer's office. Hopefully he would see the wisdom of a move towards Japan in time. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hope. Cool. We got a lot of regime stability. 97. Oh, we went down. Well, that's not good. Synthetic oil. Yes, please. We are not alone. How long has he been planning this? If you'd like to hear about that, please go right ahead. Hopefully none of this will back or hurt us or stab us in the back or anything like that. Yay! And if you'd like to read about that helping hand, please go right ahead. We get some more political power. We get some more regime stability increase, which is actually pretty darn nice. So, that'll be quite good. And of course, we got to do all the great game and all the other little guys down here too. So, not bad. And bingo, bongo, dingo. All right, anything else here? Not really, no. Um, That looks pretty good as well. 90% regime stability is pretty nice. Now we're four and three. We cannot lose. And if we do lose, well, then that, that sucks. And I'll probably redo it off screen, but whatever. Outside, observations of outside, actually. So, yep, that'd be very good. Muy bueno. And two days left. Thank you very much. It's only July 9th, 1965. And then, actually, we'll do withdrawal German advisors next, just because we can. We get some more army XP, which is actually really nice as well, so. Uh, and the Reichnach Richtensdienst. Actually, that would be good to get first, but, eh. Eh, I guess we'll get this one first, actually. Let's get this one first. Reichnach Richtensdienst. German language is such a funky language. That's why we love it. One to three. I'd like to get this one, but I'll do that one first. Why not? We're up to six. Anything else here? Not yet. Oh, the Indonesian wall. We love Indonesia. Six, huh? Is there anything regarding Indonesia? Actually, we have 90% stability. That's not enough. Token reforms, my friends. Token reforms. 100%. Very stable regime. And a moment of time. Well, we can wait for that one. We're definitely doing this one next. Ah, uh, the Norwegians. Speer withdraws German advisors from independent Norway. Alright, well, not bad. Could be a lot better, but could be a lot worse. And... Boom. Nice. We got it done, my friends. Nine and eight. Please go bust. Come on. Go bust. Go bust. We like them when they get busty. Uh, don't ask me. Um, National daddy support goes down. This isn't really worth doing, we'll do it anyways, just because I want to um, get more weekly stability. Uh, yes, please. No, please. Yes, please. And then, I like this one a whole lot. This cost, this does cost five command power every single time doing it like this. So, it's good to know if you need it for later on. Just saying, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, I want to get research growth as fast as possible. Po political power growth is pretty nice, too. Army organization. Ooh. I like the mission success chance. But bugs research. Let's go that one first. Why not? That doesn't really matter. Show and show. Show me everything you have. Regime stability because you can. Eh, why not? I don't care. And the Pacific War. Begin operations in the Pacific. Yes, please. Provide recruitment. Yes. On the insurgents. I didn't do this last time, so minus five percent for thirty-five days isn't too bad. This one could be really good, actually. Indonesia. Free Indonesia gets more stuff. Indonesia. Hmm. This isn't really working well, because we want to be closer to the Japanese. And supporting Indon or supporting free Indonesia isn't really good either. There you go. Okay, whoops. Oh, my finger slipped. My bad. Here, have some guns. Here, do that. Ah, let's do it. We'll do all that. Why not? Screw it. We'll help. We love Indonesians here. Hmm. Come on, baby. Go bust. Get busty. Brothers of the Shadows. Another attempt fails. Oh boy. Um. Oh, you know what? Let me read this one. Theodore Oberland did not know Reinhard Galen well on a personal level, but knew of him. The man had been well known to have spies under every corner during the Second World War, and Oberlander guessed by his appointment to be head of the Reich's new intelligence agencies. He had not curbed his activities in that field. He would serve as Speer's dagger in the dock, while the Gestapo had previously served as NSDAP's club in the night. Oberlander was not stupid enough to not know what that meant. Now, a, sn a small metal dot had found its way to the bottom of Oberlander's desk, as he had been informed earlier that morning. Speer had failed to remove Oberlander during the purges, and now it seemed he was on Galen's list of people to watch closely. 
This attempt to have Oberlander kill was more than subtle than the last one, but this time Speer failed to catch him unaware, and Oberland expected he would continue to fail in later attempts. One side effect, god dang it, of working in the Reich's intelligence programs was one that tended to trust their team with their life. It was odd given how much of the profession was built around lying and mistrust, but if you cannot act swiftly and unflinchingly based on the info of the other agents, you were not in the correct profesh profession. That level of trust, tested again and again, tended to build some sort of a bond even if the Reich tried their hardest to ensure friendships did not form. Those bonds, it seemed, were strong enough for Oberlander's old compatriots from the Abwehr to enlighten him on these new plans for him. With a grimace, Oberlander pried loose a listening device, letting it fall to the ground. As the heel of his well-polished shoe grinded the bug to dust, the president of the Reichstag considered sending a bouquet of flowers in thanks. Another attempt has failed. Clear the biology. Oh, we lose more PP. Oh, well. And it looks like we're going to lose this. Please, please, please. Go one. If we get tied here, that'd be really cool, actually. But I think I'll probably play this off screen again. Gosh darn it. It's all right. It's not that bad. Um, nothing there. Anything here? Yes, no, no. Pacific War. On the insurgents. Here. Take more guns. Please don't look good. At least go tie. At least tie. For the love of God, please tie. And annul them front hold. Very good. Tie, 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 tie. What do we wear when we go to interviews? We tie. We wear a tie. Come on. Okay. We actually literally tied. So, do they go into hiding? Um. Okay. You know, there's a propaganda campaign. Well, then. Oh, wait. there. But they did go that one, too. Okay. So. Uh, we'll see. Because that basically means that they will be forced to go over, but 96.7, if I don't do, don't do anything else, uh, if you want to do about that, please go right ahead. Oh, we're at 100. Nice. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. And I'm really trying to get Norway under us with international contacts. Ah, you know the city, yes. All right, so. Okay, they go in isolation. So we should have done that one earlier to get that one done. So I'll probably go back and try to get hungry under us. That would probably be my goal. Uh, actually doing this off screen, so not too bad, not too bad. We're very, very conservative here, though. Very conservative. Um, we don't need to spend more for bad stuff, so not bad. Pretty nice with international contacts and strengthen our prestige. They join the Zolverein and the Einheit's Pact as they should. Anyone who leaves us is not a friend of ours. Okay, do that too. Send them lots and lots of guns. Strengthen our prestige and Krona and the Reich Max. Oh, we should have done them earlier. That's just better get. Just because the demands lower the draft. Mm, I think I've read, read this one before. If you want to read this, please go ahead. You have your wish. Um, you get more political. Power. I actually really do like the one, but I cannot accept it. Nope. No, sir. Lower draft, lower draft. It's getting more and more irritating. Uh, I think I didn't read this one, though, so... Trusco did not give up. Though he felt the muscles in his face pulling at him with displeasure, he still wanted to push the fear into reconsidering what he wanted for the army, for the people, and for the state. And with the way he was going for it, the rest of the cabinet joined in, much to the delight of Shona. They began to raise their voice, to speak up more and more, Spado finally spoke up. Keeping this many men in our army is going to strain the capacities of our country. It will push us to the very limits of our abilities, and keeping so much under the watch of our officers now would force them to compromise the quality of training for the sake of accommodating the excess. It means a disaster for us in the war we, if we have more men than our officers could lead. Trusco also added, the country cannot continue living with this kind of system. Well, it's understandable that we keep an army that stands ready for the fatherland. It's more understandable that we keep the army at its best. We must not compromise its standards, my fear. Please consider the benefits. They are worth more than an army larger than we would want them to be. The fear himself listened to them, but sighed at the end of their words, simply ex exasperating at the continued attempts to get him to reconsider Tresco's request. This is getting more and more irritating. Cool. I, I, I definitely gotta go back and get hungry. Uh, that's a lot of deficit. I don't like that D word. That deficit. Go in when you can, though. Lower draft. Oh, over the nipper. Um... The draft will be lowered. Uh, if you want to read about that again, please go ahead. Bing bong. You must reconsider? No. A thousand times no. But a moment of time, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. And boom. Nice. Followed up with what? Survival at all costs. Well, actually, I'll read that one once you start dealing with this off. If you like to read about the administrative issue, please go right ahead, because then we're going to go to Galicia's Loyal Sons, because technically I did that one before off-screen, or on-screen, actually, because I 
couldn't get enough regime stability at one point, so... If you wonder about this one, please go right ahead, but Galicia's loyal sons. There's no need for Arada. The Ukrainian people do not need a guided democracy. They only listen to the Reich as we install a military junta. The NSDAP will appreciate this move, though the citizens of Ukraine will not. We will launch a propaganda campaign during the process of reintegration about Division Galizin. To show the people that loyalty to the Reich will pay off in time, they only need to bend the knee. What shall I be? Not bad. If so, if you need me, have some courtesy. We have your... We accept your administration. Congratulations. The Rada will be dissolved, Minister Kubayovich. Yes. Whether you like it or not, it will be dissolved. Oh, you want more? Here, have more guns. You guys can have more guns if you want. Thank you. All right. And the Provorisha Regiro. The fascist party now because the Uga Uba Gangs Regiro. Cool. And they join. Second South African War. Very nice. Hope you all have a lot of fun down there. Have a lot, a lot of fun. You know, do the best you can. Svedlovsk unifies West Siberia. The armed forces. Yes. In the end, this will be a step towards forward for the Ukrainian people, even if they cannot see it. The new Ukrainian state shall be led by one by the hair. And this sort of open show of dominance will please the conservatives greatly. However, we still need a man loyal at the top to lead the operation, and we have found one. Yuri Tis, a veteran general with sympathies to Germany. With him at the helm and the hair on his side, Ukraine will find its place again in the Ionite Pact. What's not to love? Free military factories. Um, so, uh, I might say that we might have already too many, but still. If you want some of that? That's fine. Get a lot of this. That's fine. There you go. Do that too. Very cool. Actually, here, we'll do it like this. If you want to read about the more progressive side or former side, there you go. Resurrect Ukrainian academia. Back in the West as well. Honor the brave. Who else but the Ukrainians fought so hard and so long for us? There are, of course, occasional voices crying hypocrisy on our part, but. They are silent in comparison to the fear. Albert Speer will be personally holding a speech at the coming days, asking help from his cabinet, and especially Tusco, to make sure he hits all the notes and strikes sympathy with the Ukrainian people, as well as for the boost support for the military government, of course. As he should. Uh, let's do that one, and then... Anything here yet? 65? No, cool. That one too. Thank you. Anything else? Sure. There you go, big guys. Subas Africa? Can we help him out there? I kind of want to help him out, but, you know, I don't think we can. In the heart of Russia. The Caucasian, Caucasian question as well. Pretty good. Ah, the great... Oh, crap, remaining game. Both our sides are moving their pieces for a new game. Soviet. Soviet. Honestly, it doesn't even matter if I do this one, just because I'm going to have to do it off screen anyways, whatever. And on to the brave. Followed up with... Establish the Eastern Commission. There is one noticeable benefit from installing a military junta in Ukraine. The fact that it can now serve as a reliable training fuel for green officers coming from the Wehrmacht. <clears throat> Henning von Tresco will be assigned the duty of staffing Ukraine with officers. New, new and old, loyal to the Reich, and not to show on his clique. His influence must remain within Muscovine and no one else. The reminisce, the warriors. As always, there was a man who came to the, up to the stand before the Fuhrer did, announcing his many roles and ending his leader of the GGR. Then he retired, letting Abba Speer himself take the podium and begin speaking, even with his advanced age, the sharpness of his tongue did not decline. This speech shall address both the Fuhrer's people and the people of Ukraine for so long. You have fought valiant for us. For so long, blood has been spilled in the Dnieper River for the sake of maintaining the integrity of the Ukrainian state and its loyalty to the Reich. We cannot let that go unrewarded today. With the restoration of the rightful government, the Ukrainian people can now move forward. Cheers and whistles met, were, were met in response when Speer took a moment to now before continuing. To the brave fighters of Ukraine, I dedicate this speech to you. We shall honor the men who died for Ukraine, who died for the Reich, who died serving a cause greater than themselves. I dedicate this speech to my people for knowing that the Ukrainians are loyal allies for realizing this potential and bringing them into the Reich's protecting wing now. I shall speak about the fallen to the German citizen and the Ukrainian patriot. I hope all will listen as I speak of the deeds. It went on for quite some time with uh, finishing touches, and we love the touches. Ukraine has gotten through its worst period of instability yet, and it can be safely said that it can now, as a territory, return to the Einheits back proper. One of our biggest problems has now been resolved, and this has been hailed by many as a triumph of Germany over the East once more. The remnants of the old regime will be scrubbed out, and so a new one shall arise, loyal to Germany. With the frontier beginning to settle down in peace, we can turn our attention elsewhere. Guns into plowshares. Or plowshares. All around them, gunfire rang as a soldier of the Reich, filled with grit and determination. And one bloodied hand he carried a pistol, and the other a sharply knife. Around him were the bodies of his fellow man, yet even more the Bolshevik menace. He stared angrily at the flag on the edge of the building, standing tall and mocking him. It was a bright red, with a tainted symbol of a hammer and sickle painted in the top left corner. 
The man spat with disgust, walking forward as he aimed the knife high, and the camera panned to the side. As he neared the flag, his hand swung downwards, intending to rip, this, rip straight through and tear it off as he did. It stopped in the middle of a swing, and the image slowly faded into something else. It was a hoe that struck into the soil. The camera panned back, or back. And it showed an older man working under the sun. A voice began speaking as the man continued working. Your service does not have to end after being discharged from the Wehrmacht, he stated. Indeed, they are especially valuable to the Reich. Men of brawn and brain. Veterans of who know their loyalty is true. They are what embodies the Reich. So, to those who have served loyally, there remains hope. I cussed to another older man, who walks up to someone's house and knocked politely on the door, giving them mail before leaving new industries open, and so do new opportunity. If you are a veteran of the Heer, Luftwaffe, or Kriegsmarine, you are privileged employment in civilian sectors. We cannot forget the sacrifices we have made, and so in turn, you will be rewarded. Never forget the Reich is the people, and one must always work for the people. Survival at all costs. The NSDAP, a problematic institution. But does that mean that it isn't important anymore? Of course not. Now that our big daddy has cleaned the party of traitors, it will once again exist to serve Germany its leader, just as it did in Hitler's day. The party is the bedrock of our success, the embodiment of national social spirit. Our Fuhrer might disagree with them on a regular basis, but is debate not the fuel from which knowledge is forged? Whatever their past differences, he will welcome the party's overtures, working together with Hitler's most treasured creation for the good of the Reich. It's not easy to line to tell, but it must be done. The people, after all, are fickle. Their support ebbs and flows with the Reich's economic status. Who knows where relying too heavily on them might lead us. Though the NSDAP is barely trustworthy, they are as a great, deeply rooted oak and the soil of Germany. Strong, reliable, and unyielding. Without them, the Fuhrer walks on uncer certain grounds. Oh, look at all this stuff. Wow. Uh, doesn't matter. I'm going to cl click on that button because I want Hungry back. And we'll do that one because I like getting rid of traders. And I like investing in the people. And we also like to arm insurgents and sending humanitarian aid. Not because we want to, because we can. A bureaucracy to rely on. Let's go and if you want to read about this one first, please go right ahead. So that would be very nice to do. First. And now I'm going to go ahead and do a bureaucracy to rely on. The Fuhrer would never seek to tarnish Adolf Hitler's legacy with wild dreams of liberalism. Speer is a man of principles and loyalty to tradition. Was he not with Hitler from the early days of power? Did he not shape Germany and countless other architectural achievements? Would he ever betray the very ideals which brought the Reich to the pinnacle of greatness? No. Those who doubt, those who call on the words of Bowman when they deride him as a soft and disloyal, they'll see in time that he is unwaveringly committed to maintaining the spirit of the Reich exactly as it is. Reform is coming to the Reich, but not at the expense of the soul. A bitter bill and tea, but necessary, the NSDAP is too dangerous to cross and remain steadfastly in control of the Reich's bureaucracy. By proving his fidelity to national socialist ideals, perhaps the Fuhrer can bring them in line and shore up his support and power. Popular support will only get one so far in politics at some point. Women must face facts and adjust accordingly. The Fuhrer will be vindicated in the end. Arrival in the German settler state, if you want to hear about that, please go ahead. We can do a lot of good work here. I feel like I'm shouting sometimes. Damage Indonesian infrastructure. Eh, I think we don't need to do that one. We can do this off, though. That's fine with us. Very nice. Oh, yes. Oh, we have no more money. <gasps> no! That's alright. We'll get that done eventually. Eight. Click on the button. See what happens. Um, we can do that with stuff left. So, if you want to be about helping our kid. Uh, I guess they're with us now, huh? Yeah. Eved van Hock van... Oh, Heinrich von Kleist Schmenzen. Schmenzen. Report 1. The Führer will be pleased. Sehr gut. And then showing a commitment. Yes. Because actually, I'm going to send you guys down here first. Because we, we, we will have to deal with the Ukraine. Or not Ukraine, Crimea. Get all the way down to Baku, which is called Baku in this timeline. Okay, good to know. Um, These guys are going to all have to die here, probably. So, alright, that's nine. I'm too bad we didn't get hungry earlier. But back to the pact. Very good. What an exciting trip. And placate the nation, my friends. Brashishta. Cool. Give them very helpful loans. Propaganda campaign is ended. Oh, my goodness. Four and nine. Doesn't matter, we won that last one, but it doesn't really matter. Alright, alright. Bing bong. Let's go! Extremely conservative. Almost, some might say, too conservative. There you go. How are the free Indonesians doing right now? Oh, Republic of India looking kind of weird. Pakistan not looking fat enough. I like my Pakistanis fat. 
Huge. Just massive. There you go. Doesn't even matter at this point. That's fine. And what else? Nothing there? Cool. cool. To each according to the blood. Nothing here. And that's okay. A stranger in a strange land. I hope we can help these people too. Wipe away the debt. The Reich will not collapse without you. And as all things should be, that will be good to get done too. The Exile. Great things come to those who wait. Ah, oh, Shona. Goodbye, Shona. I'm meeting of the fates. Very cool. God help us. What else do we have here? Five. There you go. Um, no, that's okay. That's okay. I guess I need more guns, huh? Free Indonesia. Oh, Free Indonesia's not looking good right now, are they? Oh, that's not good. That... I don't think we can actually send them volunteers, can we? That'd be so cool if we could, though. Then again, we'd be supporting liberal democracy. Alright, the mad count! We're ready, we're ready to go in. That's just good, so... Nice. Alright. Yeah, the Indonesian side is much more difficult to play than the other side. Alright, so they go over, they'll probably hit the thing, but whatever. Oh, we're at war, okay. Um, well, I guess we have to wait then. That's fine. Oh, let's call our allies in, that'll help us out. Thank you! Alright, I'm not even gonna bo bother looking at it, we'll win anyways. Protect the oil, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. These troops are going to cost us some money. Very nice. And Ireland is coming in as well. Ah, we love the Irish, thank you very much. And now they are at 10... Are you kidding me? Ah, eh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep going, guys, keep going. Let's go, force the attack. Get us a whole lot of army. Actually, should have put planes on these guys for air XP, but whatever. It's alright. Uh, nothing really there. Condor. And there they go. Eh, we can do that one. Why not? Just because there's no way that we could really fail to protect the oil is very nice. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy returns. Very nice. And if you like about rebuilding Grozny, please go ahead. Yay! And then secure our interests. Good. Alright. Who can give us what we need? Rubber. Oh. Okay. Uh, Ceylon is probably more beneficial to get it from anyways. Alright. Assist. Thank you. And then to secure our interests. Followed up with the Reconstruction Committee. Their GDP growth, GDP growth will increase by a little bit. And finally, we'll see our hard work pay off. Caucasia is helping our economy. As it really should be, you know. We're not doing this to be nice. So, Karma's prevailed. Oh, that sucks. Not the worst loss, though. He looks kind of happy for losing, but whatever. Eh, we can take that hit. That's fine. So after that one's done, then we should be able to do this one and probably call it an episode. Das Schwarz des Damocles. We get two events. A sword over the swastika. And rise and shine, have vessel. There you go. Sukarno wins Indonesian Civil War. Oh, good job, dude. Good job. We've got a few more weeks left for that. How's the economy going? Oh, uh, I could actually improve a lot of these things first. That's fine. Keep building, 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 building. Build until you die. Which, actually, for some of these workers, that's literally what's going to happen. It's all right. Oh. But can we actually start dismantling stuff now? We cannot. We've got to get to the next stage yet. Which sounds like it's going to be a little bit difficult for us to do anyways. But I, since I already kind of know what happens, it's kind of okay. A sword of a swastika. If you want to do about that, please go ahead. They will come and there will be millions. Give us maybe another day. How is Russia doing, actually? General Suharto, not Sukarno, but Suharto's Indonesian government. So Samara has won. 
A dinner with giants, trust me, you won't get the chance to. Very nice. But I guess we will conclude this episode by moving on directly to the next tree, which I've seen before. Oh, look at that! The old friend! Oh, so this one's different. This one's completely different. I like that. The American question is different as well. Ooh, that's really cool, actually. Across the Alps is pretty much the same, which I want to do, but we'll see what happens. I still want to be successful, so we'll go down the same route. So we'll go in this route, and then we'll go down here, and then we'll go down here. But we'll see what happens, because I do want to get this stuff done as quickly really as possible. But if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Which, actually, by auto If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. And if you want to read about... New decisions, huh? Conglomerate of Steel. Uh, this one. Call of Arms, please go right ahead. But I think that's going to end us here. I know I'm not reading a whole lot of this. You're not getting as much of the story if I'm not reading it. I understand that, but... I don't want to re read everything, because that will take another, like... Literally, probably ten episodes if I literally read everything that I've already read before. But I, I kind of want to move through some stuff, because I might do the third middle route near the end here anyways. But regardless, if you enjoyed this video... Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll figure out what conservative, ultra-conservative Speer has in store. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!